Thanks for dropping in. This is a Twistlock present, a 3D printed gift box I designed last year. Like my other Twistlock containers, the lid is held shut with a hidden rack and pinion mechanism. It'll only unlock when you twist the present's decorative topper. These gift boxes come in a wide range of sizes, but they're all sort of square. That's where this week's design comes in. This is the new Hatbox inspired cylinder twist lock present, but there's more to this update than the new shape. The box comes with a few hidden changes. The biggest improvements are to the spring. It gives the mechanism its snappy hold. The spring now has a hole for an optional M3 bolt, which can be used instead of glue to secure the decorative topper. That means you can easily switch out the toppers for different occasions or different giftees. The gear on the spring has also been offset slightly to make installing it the correct way a little more obvious. I'll go into more detail on that later. The ribbons on the lid now clip more strongly into their tracks. If you're lucky, you may not need to glue them in at all. And that's great if you want to switch out those colors from time to time. The lid itself now overlaps with the base a couple millimeters. I think this looks nicer, but the real reason behind the change is it reduces some printing artifacts in the old design. And finally, the present comes in two different widths and four different heights. That should handle a broad range of contents without even scaling the model. It's been almost a year since I demoed how to assemble one of these twist lock containers, and a few things have changed. So let's make another one. The parts list is basically the same as before. There's the lid, four lid ribbons, a base, four base ribbons, a spring, two latches, a topper, and for this demo, I'm going to use the optional bolt. First, let's install all the ribbons. These should just snap into the base, but if they feel loose, add a drop of glue. If they're too tight to fit, it doesn't take much filament to reprint the ribbons. Just use asymmetric scaling to shrink their width slightly. Or if you prefer the manual method, you can use sandpaper. Next, we'll add the latches and make sure they slide smoothly in their tracks. For the next few steps, we want both latches pushed against the inner edge of the lid. This is their closed position. Now we'll glue on the spring. A super glue or hot glue will work just fine, so use whatever you're most comfortable with. The important thing is to only put glue on this edge and avoid gluing the latches. When you push in the spring, you'll notice that the middle bulges out a bit. It's not meshing with the two latches. This is exactly what we want. Unlike the old design, this spring refuses to sit flat unless you take the extra step of tensioning it half a notch. If you rotated it the correct way, the spring will sit flat and the latches will still be pressed firmly against the inner wall of the lid. The final step is to attach the topper. I've updated all my topper designs to have a three millimeter hole for the bolt to go into, but you might not see it. The hole has a one layer floor to help it print more reliably without supports. Just take a nail or something sharp to puncture that thin layer. I found that the mechanism twists more easily if I add a few scraps of paper under the topper as I bolt it on. This acts as a spacer and guarantees that the topper won't constantly rub against the top of the lid. Now we can add the lid to the present and it's done. But that's not all for this video. You saw the intro. I have a couple snowman updates. First up, the original mini snowman now has optional arms like its larger siblings. These are so thin that I wasn't sure the prints would succeed, but in the end, I'm pretty happy with the results. Just make sure to print the correct middle section so the arms have something to port into. The next update is to the top hat. It now has holes for an ornamental hook. Just add a paper clip, thin wire, or string to display this little fidget on a Christmas tree. 
The last update is very relevant for this video. The snowman now has an optional alternate bottom with a twist lock connection port. You can attach him directly onto any twist lock box or use this snowy hill variant, which is compatible with the new bolt connection. This is ideal if you want to remove the snowman from the present later to use it as a display. It looks like all my holiday designs are slowly coming together to form an ultimate festive Voltron. But that's it for this week. I've already begun work on a bonus video, which should land next Monday. This'll be a Fusion 360 tutorial that'll cover how to modify my older twist lock presents to be whatever size you need. So until then, happy printing and thanks for stopping by. Thank you.